Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. And uh, in a moment, we're going to be having uh, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers on our show. And we're so excited to have him. He's, he's a, just a, he's a, he's a, a warrior. He's, he's a voice for uh, true manliness in the world today. So we're so grateful to have him here. And I was thinking about this. Uh, you know, when I, when I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, uh, and I started off in San Diego and... Uh, Headed up, ended up in Jacksonville, Florida, where, by the way, I understand now they have Whataburgers up there. But anyway, um, I remember I was getting my bicycle kind of tuned up, and the, and, the, and the bike, the guy at the bicycle shop says, do you have a MacGyver? And I said, well, what's that? And he pulled out this incredible tool that had, you know, little screwdrivers and wrenches and, and bottle openers and everything you could imagine that you might need uh, to fix things the, the way the TV show the MacGyver used to do. And so I think every man needs a MacGyver, a spiritual MacGyver. Uh, we need to have, uh, oh, the seven virtues would be really good to have in our MacGyver. Uh, the, the seven sacraments, the rosary, um, liturgy of the hours, understanding our catechism. These are all tools in your MacGyver. So what I've brought is I brought a man uh, to speak with us to, to join me today. And we're going to talk about what needs to be in every man's toolbox. I remember when I first had this vision of this r podcast, my son Shane Wozniak said, "Dad, you got to do a podcast." So we started out with a radio, uh, a podcast about surfing, and I found out, man, you just can't talk about the surface of things. Let's go deeper. And then we went into more. We got to go more into the Christian things, and the Lord gave me this vision. I was with uh, Jamie Derzelposky in Tampa, Florida, at the Spirit FM Catholic radio station there, and we had prayed, and I had this real clear vision of a man driving in a black pickup truck, and that black pickup truck had a big. Uh, it, 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 it was driving through gravel, and it was spinning its wheels uh, because it had a lot of power, but it had no, it had no weight in the, back, in the bed of that truck. There's no, you know those big aluminum boxes, the tool boxes? He didn't have anything in there. He had no weightiness of purpose. He had no tools, and he was just spitting gravel all over the place. And the Lord said to me at that, that, that moment, I want you to speak to the man in the black pickup truck. And that's every time I turn on my radio show, whenever I speak, whenever I write, that's who I'm writing, talking to. And so um, then uh, three days later, I was over in Cocoa Beach, Florida, at, uh, by this gravel parking lot. We had just gotten out of the water surfing. And a guy came rolling through to go to check it out and go, hey, I, you know, just to check out the surf. And as he rolled through, he had, this he he had a black pickup truck. He had a big, heavy toolbox in the back. Guess what? It wasn't spitting up any gravel. It was, going, it was going smoothly. He turned around, rolled down his front passenger window, checked out the surf. And then as he left, he rolled down the back window of his pickup truck and out stuck uh, the head of a... A, wild, a bobcat. And I go, well, that's it. We need, to, we need to reach out to the man in the black pickup truck, and we need to tell him that being on an adventure with God is about the wildest thing you can do. In fact, we say that the greatest adventure you can have in life is abandoning yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And so we have Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, who is definitely one of those men. He's on a wild ride. Aloha, Deacon. Thanks for being on our show. Aloha, Bear. It's great to be with you and to see you again. We just saw each other not too long ago at the Catholic Men's Leadership uh, Alliance uh, meeting in Dallas. So it was great to see you. And we did a couple of impromptu interviews. Yeah, we did. Which was yeah. which was really which was really fun. I put them on my on my YouTube channel. And so I just I, I got to tell you, I appreciate the great work that you're doing for uh, for men. You know, and the manliness that you bring back to male yeah. spirituality. It's it's awesome and yeah. very much needed in the church today. Yeah, well, we we loved meeting, you know, bumping in. Whenever I see you, it just it just it revives my my determination to reach out to reach out to men. Men out there are are um, a lot of them are posers. A lot of us are posers. You know, we 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 we're uh, we're isolated and alone. We're afraid to really be honest with other men about the challenges that we're facing, and so that having to be that strong guy, the strong silent type, or whatever, not tell anybody about what's really going on in their lives. We start isolating ourselves, and we got to break. We got to break through that. We, men have to come together. We need to, you know, ride a motorcycle with this pack. We just shot another season of Long Ride Home. Uh, when you ride in a pack 500 miles at a shot, you see each other's weaknesses. You can't hide yeah. them; they come out. We need to start coming together as brothers. 
You know, that that's a great point, Bear. Um, and one of the things that I bring out in, in my book called Behold the Man, A Catholic Vision of Male Spirituality, is the idea of the gift of vulnerability. You know, when, when you look at Christ on the cross, and what does Paul say? I preach Christ and Christ crucified. Paul says, I want to know nothing except the cross of Jesus Christ. And of course, the, the line that everybody knows, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so an authentically Catholic man needs to see himself on the cross as Christ crucified. Why? In that gift of breaking open and pouring himself out in love, he's making a gift of service and sacrifice to his wife, to his children, to the church, and to this culture. But people often see the cross and say, well, that's a sign of weakness. No, it's a sign of strength. Because it's, it's, what Paul says is when I'm weak, it's then I'm strong. And the weakness is knowing, is, is admitting to yourself that you need God's help every step of the way, that you can't do this by yourself. Um, you know, even Jesus needed help carrying his cross. You know, so, so being vulnerable doesn't mean being weak. As a man, it means the strength comes from the fact that you need Christ every moment of every second of every day of your life. And when we see ourselves on that cross as Christ crucified, is then we can understand what it means to make a gift of ourselves because it's when we give ourselves away in love that we truly find ourselves in God as men. That's a powerful statement. What you just said was the words of Jesus. He who, he who uh, loses himself will find himself. Yes. It's like yes. You have to give yourself away. It's in giving yourself away that you really find your true worth, your true dignity, and when you're all of the natural gifts and abilities and the spiritual gifts and abilities kind of get the juice they need to come alive. It's like those little wind up dolls, you know, until you turn the switch on, you're only half the man that, that you're meant to be. So many men are afraid that if they, if they give their lives to Jesus, they're going to have to be something that they're not. The reality is that there's something that they're not right now. They're like a, they're like right. a, a powerful, uh, uh, you know, uh, amplifier or something that isn't plugged in. You know, it's, a, it, if you, it's like having a big, powerful truck and there's no fuel in it. Uh, once you, uh, you were meant to have a relationship with God and everything is supposed to flow from that. And when you get plugged into the Lord, when you humble yourself and say, Lord, I just can't do it my way anymore. I'm going to do it your way. I, 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 please forgive me. Come into my heart. I surrender my life to you. When you do that, when you do that, that first time, and you do that again on a day-to-day, hour, hour, minute-by-minute basis, then something incredible happens. That's when the adventure begins. It's it's not a detour. It's getting on the on the highway of your life. You know, and that that's a great point. And you know, the way I like to to say that, which which you said so beautifully, is thinking about the the parable of the prodigal son. You know, there's so many men who are under um, under the, 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 the burden of uh, sin, and, and really Satan is kind of running their life. Let's be real. They're addicted to porn, alcohol, drugs, um, you know, all these things that are separating themselves from God's life. And so what has to happen is that the men have to have this encounter with Christ, but sometimes that encounter means that we have to have that pig pen experience like the prodigal son did. Now you got to understand the power of that story. If you look in the book of, of uh, Numbers, you can see that uh, the Jewish people had very strict dietary laws. They couldn't eat things that uh, you know ate from the bottom of the ocean, like so catfish and shellfish. Lobsters. They couldn't eat. Lobsters and uh, well, that was, that's a shame. You know, <laughs> the, I'm glad Acts of the Apostles, you know, that that vision came down for Paul and that all changed. But <laughs> yeah. but back in the day, and one of the things they couldn't eat was was pig because the pigs ate garbage. Now you got to understand the power of the story. When Jesus told the prod- prod- prodigal son, remember the son didn't want to eat the pig; he longed to eat what the pig ate. Mm. So someone hearing that would say, "Oh my goodness, it's bad enough." to eat the pig, but he wanted to eat what the pig ate. So in yeah. their mind, that said, oh, he couldn't get any lower. There's nothing worse than, than, than where he is right now. And that's the point. We have to realize that when we try to do this thing on our own, that we're going to fail. It's only when we finally realize we come to that rock bottom point, we recognize that only God can help me out of this situation. 
that we begin to have that conversion experience, that metanoia, which in Greek means literally turn your mind around. And when you start to finally have the courage to walk back toward God, guess what? My favorite part of the prodigal son, the father says he was, when he caught sight of his son, which means what, Bear? He was, he was looking, looking for, him. for him the whole time. Yeah. He never abandoned looking for his son. And he didn't wait till the son reached him. The father ran to meet him. So, men, look, when you finally recognize and have the courage, because it takes courage to recognize your weaknesses, when you finally have the courage to confront them and you finally recognize, I need God, and you turn back toward him, you make that effort in love to turn back toward God, he will run to meet you with his mercy, with his great grace, with his love, with his peace, to help you become the man who God created you to be. And that's where you find your true freedom. And the adversity of life turns uh, into an adventure. And and, and all the adversity, all the turmoil and and struggle, it begins to make sense because God can use that. Uh, He makes all things work to good to those who are called according to God's purposes. So the, we turn the adversity into adventure, and all of a sudden it's like um, we start getting traction in a new direction, and then there's a momentum that builds up, and uh, God, God invites us into a great, uh, thrilling, challenging, meaningful life. We're talking with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN, and you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we have with us Deacon Harold Burke Sivers today. You know, I was thinking about um, about this thing of coming to the end of yourself. I remember when I bicycled across the United States, there were it seemed like about at the 85 mile mark every day, I'd just be going, I can't go anymore. Uh, but then there would kind of like be a second wind that would come to me. And I also know uh, paddling my surfboard, doing distance paddling between the islands of, in, in, the, in Hawaii, um, it's kind of like you get to an end of yourself at some point, but somewhere there's a reservoir of strength that gives you continues to go. And I remember sailing. Uh, when I'd sail by myself, I'd always lay a, a long rope out of the boat, a long line. And there'd be knots about every five to 10 feet on that rope. And uh, in case I fell out, maybe I'd be able to grab onto that rope. But the very last knot on that rope, the sailors call the bitter end. And mm. a lot of times we have to come to an end of ourselves to find ourselves. It's like it's, it's, it's at that moment when we're in the, it seems like we're in the deepest, deepest place where the Bible says deep is calling to deep as the cataracts roar. Sometimes you have to come to a very end of yourself to be able to, uh, where nothing else seems to matter but that, that rope, and, uh, and you begin to hear the Lord knocking. He's been knocking all this time, but in, the, in that deep place where your spirit and your soul uh, touch the Spirit of God, that deepest part of you, the voice of Jesus is calling out for you and, and, and wants to save you. He's in the Savior biz, after all, and he wants to have a relationship. Deacon, can you talk to that man right now that maybe he's at the end of his rope? Maybe he's in a situation where he's been successful in his business, but he's just like bored with it. There's no meaning in it. Or, or, or maybe he's had an affair, or maybe his wife has left him, or maybe there's illness. But he's never really, he's been on the wide road. He's never really found that narrow road. What, what, what would you say to that man that ha- is hanging on to the bitter end right now? Well, here, here's what I would say. Uh, so many times we're trying to find happiness in life, but we will never have true happiness until we first find joy. So if, in, in Romans chapter 12, for example, St. Paul says, if you, if you set your minds on the things of the flesh, 
and the word he uses in Greek means the things of the world, then you focus on the things of the world. So if you focus on money, if you focus on sex, if you focus on all these things, that's what's going to take up your mind, your heart, your soul, your whole being. But he says if you focus on the things of the spirit, on the things of God, then you start to focus on the things of God. Here's the key, Bear. To set, Paul says, to set your mind on the flesh, on the things of the world, is death. Now, remember, he doesn't mean mm. just physical death. Mm. The word mavet in Hebrew means to cut yourself off from God's life. Mm. So if your focus is on the things of the world, you are going to inevitably cut yourself off from God's life. Mm. He said if you focus on the things of the spirit is life and peace. Ah, that's the key. To have true joy in your life, you have to focus on the things of God. But the tendency is this. You know, uh, everything's going well, so I don't really need God right now. Right. My job is going great. My marriage is going great. Why do I need God? Everything's going uh, fine. But when things start falling apart, all of a sudden we're looking for God. And what did God do to me? It's God's fault. It's God. We yeah. want to blame God. God, what are you doing wrong? <laughs> it's exactly right. But it's not God because, see, God sometimes allows us to fail uh, because he goes, OK, because you need to recognize what you're really searching for. You're not when you're looking at porn and, you're, and you're, you're cheating on your wife and you're drinking too much. What you're really looking for is the peace and the joy that only I can give you. But you're trying to find it in the things of the world. And you will never find what you're looking for when you're focusing on the things of the world. And, you know, and so we have. Recognize that as men. You know, men uh, love a challenge. If I said to a man, look, climb this mountain, uh, it may take you 10 days to climb that mountain. At the end of that, you're going to find the Lord, you know, or, or take this long journey, sail across the Atlantic, and at the other end, you're going to find the Lord. You can find the Lord right now. It's not a long distance. It's, it's not a long distance. It's just that recognition that you've been on the wide way and, and, and you've been on a long, big detour. And that little road going up into the high places, that narrow road that gets narrow and narrow as you go, that's the way to, you know, real delight. Can you uh, right now take a moment to pray for that man that is saying, I've had enough. I'm on the bitter end. Lord, I want you in my life. Can we pray that prayer of initial conversion and to get some back on that path? You can be there right now. You don't have to take some long journey back. Just come back to the Lord right now and watch uh, the way he puts wind, wind beneath your wings and and set you on the right path. Can you pray for that person, Deacon? Sure, absolutely. God, our Heavenly Father, we, we praise and honor and bless you, Lord. We know that often in life there are so many challenges. There are so many struggles. There are so many things vying for our time, for our attention, for our resources, for our very selves, for our very hearts and souls. And Lord, sometimes we are tempted to fall into the trap of thinking that you know, that money, that sex, that, that the things of the world can give me everything that my heart is longing for and desiring. But Lord, we know deep in our hearts that only you can satisfy the deepest longings and desires of our hearts. And so Lord, we ask you to give us that gift of vulnerability, to not be afraid to break ourselves open and pour ourselves out in love the way you broke yourself open and poured yourself out in love for us on the cross. Lord, challenge us. Lord, today we men are not challenged enough. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we often sit back and we let this culture dictate to us instead of standing up and taking charge and saying, this is the line in the sand, no more. So, Lord, give us the courage. Give us the strength that you found, Lord, when you picked up your cross and you carried that cross to Calvary. Help us to pick up our cross and carry and carry it and follow you, knowing that the cross is not the end, that there is resurrection at the end of the crucifixion, that there is an Easter Sunday after our Good Friday. So, Lord, challenge us, strengthen us, open our hearts to receive everything that you want to give us so that we can truly become the husbands, the fathers, the priests, the men of the culture who you created and call each one of us to be. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, just bless uh, the, these people, this person that's maybe making his initial or her initial conversion 
and for those who uh, are, are rededicating and recommitting to the life of being transformed in the in image and likeness of God. You know, um, Jeff Cavins, who I dig on so much, man. I love Jeff Cavins. <laughs> we, I, yeah. I, I, ro- I rode with him uh, up in uh, Lansing, Michigan, and then I, I went to his very remote cabin. Have you ever been to his remote cabin in Minnesota? No, I haven't. Yeah. It's very, very, very remote, and uh, had a great conversation with him there. And he, I, but but what, one of the things he says is, you could tell where, what you cherish and love the most by the rhythm of your life. Mm, Tell me true. what a, a godly man, a manly, a true man's, what a true man's the rhythm would be to his day, to his day, or to his week. Well, first of all, you have to be a man of prayer. There's no question or doubt about that, because uh, what's, what basically what is prayer? It's a conversation with God. And let's be real: how can you get to know someone deeply, personally, and intimately without talking to them? You can't. I mean, did you get to know your spouse? Oh, I read about you in a book. So now I want to spend the rest of my life with you. No, you have to know that person by talking to them. And that's what conversation with God is. You know, uh, one of the things that I do is I meet, I I see bishops and and talk to bishops all the time in the line of work that I do. And so I was sitting down to dinner with a bishop just not too long ago. And I said, you know, Your Excellency, when you have a priest, maybe even one that you ordained yourself, who all of a sudden, after a few years, decides he wants to leave the priesthood. And you sit down with him and you, and, and, and you have that first conversation. W- what do you say? And almost every bishop tells me the same thing. The first thing they ask is to the priest is, when did you stop praying? Ah, see? So, for example, I wake up every morning, Bear. The first thing, just like this morning, the first thing out of my mouth, Lord, Thank you for allowing me to see the light of another day so that I may give honor, praise and glory to your most holy name. Then I get out of bed. Mm. So first thing, raising my mind and heart to God, thanking God for allowing me to see another day so that I can use this day for his honor and his glory. Because bear, we're all instruments. God is the musician. Mm. And we have to allow space within our lives, within our hearts, for God to work as the musician so we can make music for the Lord by the gift of ourselves as men. We have to carve out a a space in our life for the things that we love and are devoted to. If we carve out a nice, good space for God in our lives, he will take his carving tools, too, and he'll sculpt us and create us. You know what a sculptor does? I believe it was, um, oh, oh, my goodness. I think it was Da Vinci. Who 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 did the Michael oh, Michelangelo? <laughs> okay, Michelangelo said when he goes to work with a rock, uh, you know, big piece of marble to do like the statue of David, um, he's not carving the rock. He sees the image within that rock, and he's just breaking. He's just setting it to free. When God gets that chisel and that tool out and begins working on you, he's just getting rid of all the clutter and all the things that are keeping you in bondage. Uh, to reveal to yourself who you really are, but that has to begin with the time of prayer. I got to remind everybody: Bears Man Cave cigars are so awesome. You wouldn't believe the impact that these are having. We have the Seven Virtue Cigars. My last book, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue, you know, is about the seven virtues. And each of the there's the, the sampler. There's the there's the cigar samplers, or you can buy them by the box. But the seven cigar samplers are a great uh, gift or great just a great thing to have. What they do is each of the virtues is one of the virtues is on each cigar. And the label, you have to peel it off to really enjoy the cigar. When you peel it off, there's a quote on that particular virtue. And the virtue is written in Latin and in English. And then there's the painting of the Renaissance painting of, of the woman that represents that virtue. And it's just so cool. I, I see it happen again and again. People tell me about it. I, we, I sit out and have a cigar with a bunch of men in Minnesota, uh, Protestant men called the Samson group, six or seven men. And as they unpeeled those labels, we began to have a conversation about the different virtues. I have a, someone who bought a pack and had it with his, his uh, dad who had stopped going to church, but they began to talk about the virtues. So the Bears Man Cave Cigars, you guys have got to go to deepadventure.com and try them. But, uh, and, and, and Because I think about cigars are kind of that solitude time for me. G.K. Chesterton is my man. His, I got a tin painting of him on my, on my wall outside my, on my lanai where I do my reading. But I guarantee you, my reading and my time in prayer is extended when I have a cigar in my hand. So just to encourage you guys, it's okay to do that. And then to also um, let you know all the books and all the other things we have at deepadventure.com. And Deacon Harold Burke, 
you can find him easy enough. It's 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 Harold Burke. DeaconHarold.com. DeaconHarold.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have so much going on in our ministry. Our, our web designer and our social media people go, we don't really know how to present you because you got so much going on. You know, we have the, the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show. We have uh, um, the, the Long Ride Home TV show. We just we have the Ocean Sunrise Morning Catechism. Wherever you are throughout the world, I click on Facebook Live and we, do a, we, do a, we, we read through the whole catechism. And in fact, we're about six days away from completing the entire catechism the first time. And then we're going to start up again. It took us three years to read through it line by line, but we don't just read through it. We talk about it. And on Facebook Live, people will give their comments and their, their questions as we go. And it's just really cool. So I invite you to go to deepadventure.com. But specifically, I want to remind you guys that uh, our TV show is very lightly funded by EWTN, and our radio show is not funded at all. And so we rely on you. And so if you go to deepadventure.com, and become a Patreon donor, two cool things happen. You get to have the radio show the minute we record it in the video form on, on uh, YouTube. So with Deacon Harold Sivers, we want his, this show that we have uh, airing today was recorded months ago. You'll be able to get that radio show the minute we've got it produced and in the video format. And then our TV show, uh, you get to have all of the episodes that have been delivered to EWTN, season one and season two of Long Ride Home, but every time we get a new director's cut uh, video done, episode done, you get it. And that may be a whole year before it airs on EWTN. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com. Come on, you guys. We need your help to propel this ministry forward. And you can do that by becoming a Patreon donor. Go to our website and find out more about that. Back here with Deacon uh, Harold Burke Sivers. Uh, I just remember the first time I, I bumped into you was years ago. I don't even remember exactly where. Maybe five, six, seven years ago. But every time I see you, it's like a navigational waypoint in my life. You know, that, really, that moment with you recharges me and re, uh, de- makes me more determined than ever. You know, I, I feel the same way about you, Bear. It's just amazing from where I first met you and the things that you're doing now. I mean, there's no question that God is blessing what you're doing. Thank you. You know, and it's a sign that the Holy Spirit, you know, I mean, you got the cigars out. Actually, I'm going to get some of those cigars because, <laughs> because I belong to a, a kind of an informal men's group. Right. We call ourselves the Meat Fest. <laughs> so it's a group it's a group of like-minded men who love Christ, who love our Catholic yeah. faith. We get together, we put big slabs of meat on the grill, Praise and we have chips and beer where, where and is this? cigars where, where, and <laughs> where do I go? <laughs> well, you know, it started That's as, it, as yeah, we started it like the Friday after Easter. Because, you know, that whole Easter week, every day is a solemnity, including Friday. Mm. And so you can eat meat on that Friday because it's a solemnity. And so it started off as just like this meat fest celebrating eating meat on Friday. <laughs> but now we get together about three or four times a year and we have this meat fest. It's just a great way to get together as men coming together and doing, you know, drinking beer and uh, or wine or, you know, smoking and, uh, cigars. And, and a lot of them are steps of ribs and steak and just talking about what's this going is on. What our I, going on the- I, I dig on this because what you're doing is you're inviting men who might not normally even come. They would, ne- would, would never come to the basement of a church. Some of the guys, right. you know. But they get to come right. here and meet other men and realize these men are more relaxed about themselves, more comfortable about themselves. They're more real than any other men I know. I want to have what they have. You know, we really, we really emphasize this, that I'm a big fan of that man as you. I helped get it started in, in, in Hawaii and the other uh, men's uh, uh, movements like, I guess, what is it? The Exodus 90, I think it is, and things yeah. like that. I, I love all of that. Um, and, the, and there's even at my own parish, we have our own... Uh, Live for more discipleship program for men. Here, the one I go to here in, when I'm in Florida. But the, we have something called Bears Man Cave, and what that is is men go to our deepadventure.com site and they join the man cave. And guess what? It costs them money every month. They got to pay to be a member, so it makes them man up right off the bat. But they be, and it's not a lot, but they become a member, and then they're part of a secret Facebook group. And then what that what we do is we we I might 
you know, interview, the interview I did with you, I posted it to the man cave. I didn't post it for everyone to see. I posted it to the man cave. So the members of the man cave, I might be quoting something from Fulton Sheen or GK Chesterton or something even I thought of. And the other men do the same thing. They'll pray, they'll, they'll post something uh, inspirational or something that's really challenging them or uh, uh, just a need for prayer, like a rush, urgent need for prayer. But then what's really cool is about every two or three weeks, I just randomly say, you know, Saturday night or Tuesday night or Wednesday morning or whatever, I just randomly post it. We're going to have a man cave meetup and we do a Zoom video chat. So the men all come online. I give them the meeting ID and there may be 10, there may be 30 men, whatever, all on one screen. You can see all their individual faces. And when one of them talks, their face gets bigger. And we, we're going through, we talk about what's going on in our lives. And then we spend about, oh, two thirds of the time reading through uh, my book on the, on the virtues. But what I dig on this is those men then are starting their own informal type man caves, you know, like, like the, the deck with the barbecue and the whiskey and the cigar and the beer. That is how you reach men. Then they can go to the That Man Is You program. So we're totally, you, you, you see what I'm trying to, what, I'm, what we're trying to do there. And it's actually, it's actually working. So it's pretty, we have to be yeah, creative. Like a, like a pre-evangelization program, if you will. I like that. Right, right, right. It's, it's opening the door for them. Let me ask you this now. Um, I, me- I mentioned at the beginning of the show about the MacGyver tool. What kind of tools does a man need to have in his, uh, in his box to be a man, well, to be a true man? Well, you know, um, what, what I like is uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, Paul goes through the armor of God. Mm. You know, the, the uh, girding, so girding your loins, breastplate of righteousness. You know, so I think uh, what, what I do in the last chapter of my book, Behold the Man, mm. is I take each piece of that armor and I apply a spiritual principle to it for a man. So those are the tools that go in his toolbox. Those are the pieces of the armor that he puts on. Uh, so he can be the man that God created him to be. So the first one, of course, is uh, gird your loins, right? So what does that mean? It means pull your pants up. You know, so many, <laughs> when, when did this thing start? When so many men are with this sagging, oh when they're my wearing God. their pants halfway down their butt? Come on, man. A real man doesn't do that. Yeah, but when buckle a man up your, prepares, tighten your belt yeah. and get ready for the fight. Right. Well, that's it. No, that's exactly yeah. it, man. Because girding your loins, that's how a man prepared for battle Back in the time of Christ, he would, you know, they wore those long kind of like um, gowns or like alb kind of things. And right. They'd cinch it up between their legs, tied around their waist, and their loins would be girt. And sometimes you see images of Christ on the cross and you see that the, mm-hmm. the, the, his, goins, his loins are girt because he's battling Satan on that cross. Wow. He's battling sin and death on the cross. And so for us as men... You know, we, we can't say things like, how do we prepare for battle? You can't say, well, I'm a good person. I don't need to go to church every Sunday. I don't need to pray. I don't need rules or commandments. All I need to do is be good. That's garbage. <laughs> you know, because Jesus Christ does not teach that. Nowhere in the scriptures. No, it's in the Jesus Bible. It's in the Bible. It says if you're good enough, you that, go to heaven. Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> Where is that exactly? Be, <laughs> you know, what, you know what, what stories of rich young man, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, we have to follow the commandments. He lists six of the commandments. He said, I've done all those things right. since my youth. See yeah. how good I am? Mm-hmm. Did Jesus then say, dude, you're good to go? Just throw you just just put it in neutral, put your life in cruise control, you'll just coast into heaven. No. Yeah. yeah. Jesus said, There's one thing you have to one more thing you have to do. Take all your stuff, sell it, give it to the poor, you have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. And he couldn't do it. Mm. Jesus says, Give your life to me, commit your life to me, trust me, put me first above everything else. And he couldn't do it. So one of the things we have to do in our toolbox is to gird our loins. We have to really make our relationship with God the number one priority in our life. Because if you have the priority of God, family, then everything else, then you're, you'll see your, your purpose for existing, for, uh, how you come to be a man of God starts to fall into place. And we can't use excuses like, well, I don't have time. I don't have time to pray at my wife. I don't have time to pray. You know, I don't have time really means it's not important to me. Because mm-hmm. whatever else you're doing, instead of praying with your wife or putting God first in your life, that's what's important to you, whether it's the football game or the remote control, whatever it is. That's what's important in your life. Stop kidding yourself. Um, so that's the first thing. You have to well, we gird got, your let's loins. Take, let's take a quick battle. break. We'll be right back with more of the of the, the spiritual armor with the Deacon Harold Brooks Sivers. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure uh, reminding you 
You can find Deacon Harold at, at deaconherald.com. You'd be lucky if you can get a, get him to come speak because he's pretty he's booked constantly. One of the most prolific speakers on the in the new evangelization. But get Deacon Harold to come and, and by all means read his books. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Ad Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to t thank our sponsor, Tom Gripe and Bettina over there and uh, Reba and the other members of the uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. They've been so good to us. I mean, actually supporting our ministry. They're our only corporate sponsor and it's, it's huge what they do to help us produce the radio show and the video, pod, the video version of this. Uh, we got to go there and meet them when we were riding motorcycles in uh, uh, the last time we did a shoot a few months ago. Got to go down there into their into their offices and meet the, and meet Bettina especially who helped me so much while I was shooting Long Ride Home in Hawaii. I had to refinance a, a car that I had in order to help finance the the shoot of the of the show. And Bettina, while I was riding motorcycles, she was doing paperwork and texting me, and I would stop and I text her back, and I was signing things on my iPhone, and she. She did all this for me in Hawaii while she's up in Indiana. So we actually love Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. When I walk in there, I feel it's almost, it's just, I have a sacred feeling about this place. It's right next to the campus there, of course. So thank you for our sponsorship. Uh, we're, we have with us today Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and we're talking about the tools the man, a man needs to have in his tool chest. And we've been talking about the spiritual armor. You know, Deacon Harold, when um, I was, I, I love history. Have you ever gotten to read Warren Carroll's series on, on, on Christendom? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do have that series. It's excellent. Oh, man. I, and I read that one place where he talked about that one general. I believe he was in Spain. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to underline it. And I didn't have a pen, and I never could remember where it was in one of his six, six or seven volumes. There's that one man who never, that uh, had, was a general that was just scarred like crazy, scars everywhere except for on his back because he was always on the offensive. And when we look at the spiritual armor, of course, there's no armor for your back. <laughs> We're That's not supposed right. to be defending. We're supposed to be stepping into the breach, standing our ground. So tell us more that's about right. it. Yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, well, that's a good point, Bear, because he, when you look at this, uh, Paul's description of the armor of God, the because uh, he's describing a Roman soldier's uniform, and the only place where it's not protected is the back. Why? Because... The way the Roman soldiers fought, they expected the, the soldier fighting next to you to protect your back. That's where we get the expression, mm. I got your back, comes mm. from. Mm. And so we have to have each other's backs as men. We need brotherhood. But just, oh, exactly, exactly. And just continue with, the, with the, uh, the armor of God. So the breastplate of righteousness, what does that protect? It protects your heart, protects your chest, your heart. And so that means we have to take advantage of the sacrament of reconciliation in order to protect our hearts. And some men, you know, they kind of shy away from the sacrament of reconciliation. Oh, I don't want to, you know, go to a priest. But here's the thing. with We confuse guilt with shame. So mm. guilt is when your conscience is working properly. You say, okay, you know what you did was wrong, you know, and, and your conscience convicts you. That's a good thing. That means your conscience is working properly. Shame is when somebody finds out what you did. Then you feel ashamed. But we think that going to confession and confessing to a priest, I feel ashamed because I don't want to tell the priest that I was looking at porn or that, you know, or, or some other embarrassing sin that, that, that I may have done. But that's not the point. Remember, you're confessing your sins to Jesus Christ. The priest is there um, uh, as, as, the, as the representation of Christ because Christ still wants to touch us with his own hands. He still wants to love us with his own heart. He still wants personal relationship with us, and he does that through the priest. And I just want men to remember Ezekiel 18. If a wicked man turns away from all the sins he has committed and does what is lawful and right, he shall live. Mm. He shall not die. Right? He shall not be cut off from my life. 
So, you know, and so he, he, uh, the, the, Ezek- the God is, uh, um, through Ezekiel is beseeching, you know, turn away from all your transgressions because I have no pleasure in the death of anyone. Mm-hmm. says the Lord. So turn and live. Well, let, so let, take let, advantage let, of that reconciliation. I want to emp- really underline this. In about four or five minutes, we're going to be done with this radio show. And I want you to determine right now that you will go to your phone and call and, and set up an appointment with a priest. And I know some of you are like, oh, I can't go. My priest, you know, he'll think so badly. But we'll go to a different parish if you feel like, if that is stopping you. Set up an appointment. Go to confession. You know, Deacon, I know for me, uh, the first time I skydived, it, it, it probably every time. Uh, I remember how scared I was, you know, and I asked people, do you want to go skydive? Yeah, I want to go. And, I'll, and we'll talk about it for a couple of minutes. So I said, let me shake your hand. If their hand is clammy, I know they're going to jump because they're really serious. <laughs> they're scared to death, you know, uh, except for our priest, our parish priest. We had him skydive with us on Long Ride Home. Um, the last shoot we did in Hawaii it was so funny because we told them we were all going to jump and then it was time to get in the plane. We all said, oh, I have a paper cut or I, you know, I didn't sleep well last night. So he was the only one that jumped. But anyway, when you go in, when you get in that plane, you know, when you get in the line of the confessional, you know, they, getting on that plane, you put on that, you put on your uh, jumpsuit, you put on your, um, your, your canopy, and then you're getting in the plane. Then all of a sudden you're in line at, at, at confession, you're in this airplane, there's seven people in the airplane, and little by little, there's only maybe one or two left you know, in the airplane, there's maybe only one or two left in the confession in line, like, oh, no, this is really going to happen. I got to go in there. And then you go in there and you confess your sin. And, uh, and it's just like skydiving because there's that trepidation before. There's that preparation and then trepidation. But once you leap out of that, with, 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 some, with some exceptions, once you leap out, the videos you see of the people is they're just full of joy. And when you land, when the canopy opens, you have that peaceful, serene feeling. And then when you land... You really feel like you could conquer the world. And that's what, that's the, the mindset I want you men to have, you, you men and women who are listening. Go jump out of that plane. Go skydiving with the Lord. Go to confession as soon as possible. If you haven't gone in a month, it's always good to go. But some of you may have not gone for decades. And I'm telling you what, most conversion stories that I hear, so many of them say, I went to confession and everything changed. Anyway, I interrupted no, you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I, I hear priests saying, you know, some of the most amazing confessions. I, I was giving a, um, a, a retreat for men, and, and I'd given a talk on confession, and a priest came. He was crying. Mm. I said, Father, you okay? He said, I just heard the most beautiful confession. Father, forgive me for I've sinned. It's been 30 years since my last confession. Mm. You know, and that the priest was just so moved that God— you know, inspired this man to come back and, and, and rededicate his life to, to God. It's just amazing. So in, four, anyway, in one, four minutes, they're going to go and they're going to call the priest and get set up for confession. But now you got like right. three minutes to wrap this up. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Just, okay. A, just a few of those. Or maybe if we just get to this other one, Bear, because yeah, this one's okay. important. Okay. Shod your feet with the gospel of peace. Mm. So how do you find the peace? Eucharistic adoration. Mm. Man, Bear, game changer. Eucharistic adoration is an absolute game changer in your life. I am living testimony to that fact. You know, seven years ago, I left a 23-year career in campus law enforcement to speak and to write full time. It's like jumping out of that plane, Bear. Mm. I was scared. I'm like, wait a minute, God, what, what are you saying to me right now? I, I'm very comfortable what I'm doing, Lord. Mm-hmm. I, you know, but the Lord said, no, I need you to do this. And I stepped out in faith and I was scared, just like jumping out of that plane. But I tell you, Bear, after seven years, it is the absolute best thing I could have done. Not only am I honoring God by, by the work that I'm doing, my marriage got better. My relationship with my kids got better. Everything in my life got better when I surrendered everything to God and it began the Eucharistic adoration. I would encourage men to go to confession and then start going to adoration just an hour a week. Remember, mm. Jesus said, could you not stay awake with me even for an hour? There's 168 hours in a week, man. Just one hour a week. And I'm telling you, transformative for your life. Absolutely. Mm, mm. When you go to Eucharistic adoration, because I know you go daily, basically. That when you go someplace, when you get set up to do a speech someplace, you say, where is the nearest adoration yep. chapel? That's right. What, what, do That's you right. Do, what do you do there? Tell, me, tell us about your experience there. What, what, well, can, people, what can people expect? See, here's the beautiful part, Bear. Everybody thinks, oh, I have to do a rosary. Oh, I have to do this. You don't have to do anything. All God wants is your heart. Hosea 6, verse 6. The Lord says, I want a loving heart, 
more than sacrifice, knowledge of my ways more than Holocaust. Just go there and say, Lord, I'm here. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm committing myself to you. I, I'm going through this thing right now with my wife. I'm going through this thing with my job. Lord, I, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to respond here. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Lord, help me. Just pour out your heart to him. That's all he wants. Mm. Don't worry about doing fancy prayers or reading from the Bible. Yeah. Just give yourself to him in adoration mm. and let God speak to your life, to your mm. situation, to your heart. You know, I, if, you, if you see, if you can see my the video here on my, my wrist. I have my fish hook, which means I'm an evangelist. It's a Catholic fish hook. But I also have these 50 beads here uh, from Greece, the tradition of the monks of the desert. For me, because I'm uh, ADHD, uh, sitting still for five minutes is, is suffering for me. <laughs> so to go to adoration, <laughs> I take off this, this, um, this bracelet with these little, these little rope ties and I just pray the, the prayer of the Desert Fathers, you know, Jesus, Lord Jesus. My wife and I do it together, too, in the car. But Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. But I usually just kind of get it down to Jesus, Lord Jesus. Mm, and by beautiful. holding on to my, little, my, little, my, my prayer beads, this, this, this tradition of the Desert Fathers, it carries me along, and, and then in time I just get still. But it's so beautiful. We, you know, we've run out of time. Deacon, uh, your website is? Uh, DeaconHarold.com. And you got 10 seconds. I didn't give you a chance to tell you about your newest book. Uh, Father Augustus Tolton, The Slave Who Became the First African-American Priest. And it just talks about lessons we can learn from his life. Amen. I got to get that book. Um, uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We got to go. You can find out more about uh, us at DeepAdventure.com. And you can also follow me uh, on Facebook at, at the Deep Adve Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure Ministries. And subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe and click the little bell so you get notified. Because as you, when you subscribe to us on YouTube, it really helps us uh, build up. Uh, YouTube begins to do more and more things to help us. So we thank you for joining us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.